career because all I was doing then before that was touring to state to state and I was going back to state to state but I and I wanted to go to the next level so I said I need a, a, a TV show or a movie and I got Fridays and I was like oh thank you God because I know this is gonna make bring me a bigger audience then I can show another side of me YouTube family what's good this your guy DJ Bless One thank you for watching another episode of I Smoke Hip Hop Live look guys we're watching Chris Tucker today he breaks down filming and what's going on why he quit Friday series and not getting part of the sequels and all that and he speaks on the other things as well and you'll be shocked to hear his actual response of why he didn't do another Friday I mean salute to Chris Tucker I need y'all to Pay them bills right quick by just hitting the like button, hitting the notification bell. Let's start the show right away. They're really like, uh, well, I know Cube want to do another because Cube, of course, it's like you know he kind of created Fridays, uh, and I was in the first one. Yeah. And Q, after I did the first Fridays back then, I never thought about doing sequels. I always wanted to do a good job and keep moving to the next movie. So Cube asked me back in, I think it was 96 or 97. He's, he's Chris, we want to do a, another Fridays, man. And I was just like, nah, I don't want to do another Fridays. I want to, you know, I want to do like Eddie Murphy and them did. I want to do Money Talks. I did Money Talks and then and eventually did Rush Hour. I said, I don't want to do another. And he said, what? You sure? I was like, nah, I don't want to do another <laughs> So he he couldn't believe it, but he kept he moved kept moving and he got you know he got uh, Mike Epps and they went and did another one and it was great he did two of them and they were great. So now, of course they they was in a cube you know he don't mind if I come back at this that that but the studio I think uh, want to do it they didn't want to do it and then Cube is it's kind of Cube is spearheading that and I never really wanted to do another one. Uh, and, I, and I always said, because I know my fans love the movie so much, they always bring it up. I said, well, if they come, come if they come to me with a great script, great idea, I'll definitely consider it. But I said, it's been so long ago, and that character is so, became such a great character. I don't want to mess it up unless it's really something good and we can really make it That's better, true. you know. Yep, you I could. got it on my shirt. You oh, could. thank you. I saw that. I appreciate that. That's awesome. <laughs> I heard through the grapevine now. Correct me if I'm wrong. That the reason why you wasn't going to do another Friday was because they didn't pay you, man. Now, oh no, that's not true. That's not true. The first, and I'm gonna tell you the first, the, the the first Fridays. I was so happy I got that movie because I knew how it was gonna help my career because all I was doing then. Before that was touring to state to state and I was going back to state to state but I and I wanted to go to the next level so I said I need a, a, a TV show or a movie and I got Fridays and I was like oh thank you God because I know this is gonna make bring me a bigger audience then I can show another side of me so when I did it uh I it was uh, it was incredible but back then I gotta tell you one of the reasons why I didn't do the second one because of the weed because I said, man, that movie became a phenomenon. I want everybody. I don't want everybody smoking weed. And I never really told people this because I kind of forgot about it. But it was yeah. one of the reasons why I didn't do it. Because I said, I don't want to represent, you know, everybody smoking weed. I kind of made it more personal than a movie, and that's one of the reasons why I said, nah, I didn't want to keep doing that character. Okay. And it probably was good for me because it kept me moving, you know, to the next phase and next movies. But that was one of the reasons I, I said I didn't want to be the. Get everybody smoking weed high in the world. So. Now, I don't want to, I just want to ask real no. quick. So, like, when you say a great script for Friday, because most of those movies are really like powered by the two leads, you know, yeah. with you and Ice Cube, and then, then he went and got Mike Epps. So, like, what does like a great Friday script act like? What is it, like, what, what would be. What would you say would be like the great or the best Friday script or something like that for you? That's a great question because you even made me think about it. It would be a more like a great idea. Like <laughs> this idea, this is the next level of where these characters will be at and go that it'll make sense uh, to the audience, makes sense to everybody, makes sense to the story out of all those uh, movies. They had a, they had one in between. Yeah. They had, they had two. So yeah, two, yeah. Three movies. Uh, so where will we be 
and what's gonna be going on. It just can't be like jokes. It has to be a logical, it, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. I got you, I got Those you. Those are the movies yeah. that last, you know, if, if you do sequels, because they kind of, they're hard to do, but if you do that, you gotta really think it out and then make it make sense. So okay. those are the things. And then once you get those things together, the elements together, then you can come up with a kind of uh, the, the dialogue and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Tell me this now, you've worked with people like the, uh, Charlie Sheen when you did Money Talk. Now, yes. What was that like working with somebody of that caliber, that kind uh, of album? He was great, man. I was just telling somebody yesterday and uh, Charlie Sheen and, and uh, Paul Sabino, great actors because I did a lot of improvisation in Fridays and Money Talks and all my movies because I, I try to put a lot of uh, put a lot of myself, real. I, I try to make the character real uh as, as i can uh do so soon as when i get into that charlie sheen they will come right back with their acting skills man and i believe so hollow that you got to work with other great actors because when you giving out they're gonna give back and even make you go deeper uh so I, it was so great working with charlie sheen because he was such he's such a great actor and you see that in two and a half men and all the movies he's done before that wall street and paul savino you know all his movies from goodfellas on those guys, they don't miss a beat because they listen to every word you're saying and they are coming right back at you in that world you're at and they, they, they're really they really in the character, man. So yeah, that's a great question. Man. So you but, had prime Charlie hey. Sheen. Like you had like, you were like superstar Charlie Sheen. Like yeah. was he was he wilding like, uh, like that? How he yeah. wilds now? Charlie was the nicest guy in the world, man. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you right there, he, he had his, little moments here and there but he was still a great guy and you've yeah. been around people he was i mean he let me borrow his ferrari man when i was like 21 years old because i was i was bold enough to ask him child let me keep your ferrari for a weekend he said sure sure i'll have my assistant drop it off at your apartment i'm staying almost <laughs> in the hood in korea town i got a two a hundred some thousand dollars ferrari parked out in the front of my apartment because i'm still asleep i didn't put it in the parking structure yet and everybody's like what this is Charlie Sheen. That's what. That's how nice of a guy he is and and was back then, man. So I I would always you know have a lot of love for Charlie because how how well he treated me and he was and he's still to me just the biggest star, greatest, biggest hearted. He loved it. He loved it. He loved it. He he was like he just would laugh. He'd be like oh, crazy, crazy. Right. <laughs> you say you kicked with the wrong foot. You oh know yeah, yeah. He's he like you kicked because with the Mike wrong would leg. do his with his right. Don't you do yeah. yours with your left? Yeah, yeah. He was like Chris, you messing up that kick. Right. You got to get that right. Hey man, where were you at when you heard crazy. Michael pass? I was in Atlanta, man. Mm -hmm. I was in Atlanta, and it, you know it was like everybody else, man. I was like couldn't believe it and it was it was it was a sad day man but michael left us so much and every time yeah, his man. music comes on man i just get happy and and just it just it, you know he just did so much he was such uh he was so ahead of his time mm -hmm. and he really lived a full life he, even though it wasn't long long but he lived a full life i mean he lived a hundred lives man because yeah, he, yeah. he was incredible thing man and so you gotta you gotta go deep and, and tell stuff you might not want to talk about right but it's actually it, it makes you it, it's healing it's make you feel better like at them, yeah, bro. Man, man yeah. they yeah, they're great, man. They're yeah. great. They uh I just seen one of the posters on Sunset, man. I'm like, yeah, that's 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 me. Netflix, yeah. they didn't lie, they did it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's dope about that, man, is like Netflix isn't the graveyard. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like yeah, there's some yeah. things you'd be like, damn, Chris, oh man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. people know what Netflix yes. is yeah. and, and and what yeah. the ownership and you know what I'm yeah. saying? They rivaling everybody they, right they, now. They, yeah, they on top of their game, man. And they, they wanted it. And I was like, let's do it. How long ago did you job. shoot it? I shot it a while ago. I shot Damn. it a while ago, man. And I was like, and even with the Netflix yeah. momentum has been building and yeah. building and yeah. building. Yeah, they're you know a great company. The line. All the time, man. All the time. And in my house, back in the day, people come, teenagers come over my house want to smoke weed. Right. Like, I don't want to smoke no weed no more. That's in the movie. Right. Get out of my yard before you get us both in trouble. Hey, man, do, do you feel like they, we put you in a time capsule, though? I, you know what? I'm, I'm not really. I mean, I know that it, you know people love the movie. I'm glad they do, but I, you know, I don't think that way, no. Right, right. Man, yeah. I, and I'm wondering what a Friday, what would, what, you know, I'm pretty sure if a script came, something, it'd be, oh, we... 
yeah, move yeah. back to the neighborhood yeah. or something. You, yeah. We have to pull something out of our asses. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? What's the next move for Chris Tucker? You know, I got a movie. I just did a movie with Ang Lee who did Life of Pi. Oh. That's coming out, um, you know, soon. And uh, so that's a, you know, a, a fun movie I just did. And I'm, so I'm just want to do more movies uh, and do more more stand up, you know, keep do, on the road, man, and just keep keep it going. So and good. also, man, just in, in the stand up Chris Tucker Live, you touch on just the tax situation also. Oh, yeah. yeah you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And the tax situation, that was more of. You know how you would trust somebody to do their job yeah, while you yeah. over here doing your job? Was it that yeah. situation? Like, man, my job is to act. Yeah. Those, those, those spiritual uh, things, uh, those decisions that, you know, it's good to make, man. It's good to make because uh, it helps you. Right. I mean, I think that you were one of the, I guess, like first people of the generation, at least my generation, to present themselves as the young legend of today. When you got on stage at Def Comedy Jam and said, I'm pissed off, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like from yeah. that point, I was talking to Donnell Rollins about that. And yeah. from that point forward, we knew you were going to be a star. Right. And I said, I said, oh man, that made me become a man because people, a lot of people, Sacrifice. everybody ain't gonna agree with you. I'm bringing a new product to market. We come. Right. They called me, I said, all rent due? Is all rent due? It's crazy, man. When I, first, when I did my first Tonight Show, I was on the TV show one time, and the kid I barely knew from high school called me and said, hey, man, can you buy me a truck? <laughs> I said, I only made $518. So you don't get all that money, though. You got to pay taxes. <laughs> That's half of it. Then you got to pay a lawyer, because you got to have a lawyer. <laughs> then I gotta, yeah, you got to take care of your family, a couple of cousins, Willie, Uncle Leroy. <laughs> And you find you got, need a new you got relatives kidney. you didn't know you met before they come oh, out. Oh man, I got so many new re relatives. It's just so crazy. <laughs> they come up to me. You know I'm your cousin. Your grandma would know who I am. I'm your cousin. I said, No, you my grandmama cousin. <laughs> <laughs> she know you. I don't know you. Now, how is this one different from besides having a two in front of it? This oh. one is different from the because you did this one in, in Hong Kong. Right? Yeah, we did. We did. We did it in a couple of places. We did the beginning of it in Hong Kong, right. and then we came back to L.A., Los Angeles. Then we went to Las Vegas. We just put everything like sequels. You just you just put all. You, if you want to go on vacations, you write it in the script. You put all your vacation things in the script. So. <laughs> we say, hey, let's go to Hong Kong. How did you finish? Because see, my fear is that all people in Hong Kong will think all Americans now are like Chris Tucker. Oh man, Hong Kong. <laughs> I was the only black person in Hong Kong. I was looking for black people. I said, where are the black people at? No black people, no, no. They thought I was Kobe Bryant, man. They didn't know who I was. Really? Kobe Bryant? Yeah. It's like, Kobe, Kobe, sign my autograph, Kobe. <laughs> we love you, where the check? <laughs> I was running, man, and I was over there. I got arrested in Hong Kong. You got arrested for what? They thought, they because they thought I was a spy, because they thought I had got off the spy 